In this video, I'm going to take a look at DHCP, which stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Many of your students, I would have thought, if they're anything like mine, have started doing things like this. They've started adding tons of clients in, and then they'll have been connecting them into the switch, which is all fine. And some of mine have created 20 or 30 different clients. And the problem is they then have to go through if they want their network to work properly and configure all of the IP addresses. Now this is a pain and it's something that we don't have to do in the real world because we have a thing called a DHCP server. So I'm going to set up a DHCP server. I'm going to drag on a computer here and I am going to change this to DHCP server and I am going to put my DHCP server at 192.168.0.4 and then I'm going to connect it into the network. Now the way of installing a DHCP server for some reason is a little bit different. You don't set it up in the software. So there's a button over here that says DHCP server setup. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to uh, set addresses and there's a lower and upper bound. So I'm going to say 192.168.0.100 is the first address it will assign and 192.168.0.200 is the last address it will assign. So it's got 101 addresses that it can give out. And I'm going to leave these blank for the moment. But the great thing is that if I need to set a gateway or a DNS server, which I will later on, I can just come back into DHCP and it will give those settings to all of the other computers. The last thing you need to do, really important, is click on activate DHCP. Otherwise, none of this will work. Sometimes, even though you're giving out addresses, uh, automatically you want a computer to get the same address each and every time in which case you can use this static address assignment business over here so what I'm going to do is uh, I can for example say I can have a look at this machine here my normal echo server and I can copy the MAC address. It doesn't allow you to right click, so you'll have to use Control and C. And I want that always to be 0 0.2. So I'm going to come back onto my DHCP setup. And I'm going to put the MAC address in there. And I'm going to say 192.168.0.2. The clients over here, I don't care if they get a different address each time. So I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. Now what I do have to do on each client as I add it is I need to say use DHCP for configuration like so and I just need to do that for each of the clients just click the button like so and then I'm also going to make this server have a DHCP configuration. So what will happen when I start to simulate the network, and you'll see it happening really clearly, is all of the computers will say, help, I haven't got an IP address. And you'll see that communication come along here. Now that's going to be sent as a message from IP address 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which means any address. They will also be sending their MAC addresses. And the DHCP server will respond to them with the MAC address saying, use this address, please. And then the computer will use that address setting and the, any other settings that the DHCP server sends. Now, the one thing that you've got to understand about this is that MAC addresses in terms of communicating only work on a local area now, like this. A local area network so actually you can't have a DHCP server for the whole internet because it won't be able to uh, talk to machines that it isn't directly connected to the network of so this only works on a local area network 
Sometimes your modem or router may receive a DHCP address from your internet service provider, but that's because they're on the same network. So let's give this a go. We're going to simulate this, and you see this kind of storm of broadcasting around, and then it's all settled down. And what you'll see if I hover over one of these is this is 192.168.104, 102, 105, 103, 101, 100, and 106. And this has got its proper address because we did the static address assignment. Now, in the real world, the address assignment for these would happen at random and as new machines came online they would grab new addresses and the addresses are leased for a certain amount of time and then they have to be renewed with the DHCP server. But this is quite a good simulation because now when we go back to the build mode if I want to add a new computer all I have to do is drag it on, connect it up and then click to say use DHCP. Of course most modern computers are configured to use DHCP out the box these days because that's the most common way of running a network. But this should make it far easier for your students to set up larger networks of computers. Hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time where we will start talking about routers.